In the midst of the rumblings and the shakings and the chaos and the darkness that we're seeing in the world, God is in the center of it all. And that is our greatest hope. And we're so glad you're joining us for Hope today because we're gonna have a really special conversation talking about how God is moving all around the world, things that we're seeing, biblical prophecy. Tom, tell us what's coming up. Yeah, uh, you know, when you think about it, that was a great intro, Sydney, because really what is going on in the world? We see all these things. We see the, you know, we see what's going on in Ukraine and in Russia, with the Middle East, so many different areas where there is trouble. And we wonder where, where do we stand in God's end times calendar and, and closer to home, what's going on in this country? And where is America in biblical prophecy? Is America in biblical prophecy? Well, with us today is Rick Pearson, of Prophecy USA, you see his program on Sunday evenings, and uh, he's going to be sharing with us about America, Babylon, and end time prophecy. Guys, you got to stay. I'll give you the. I'll give you the. He's going to talk about America being Babylon. Everybody's like, what? <laughs> but he's going to talk about that and share with us what he's seeing in the scriptures and what he's seeing in America. It's going to be a great conversation. Yeah, I think he's going to shake some things up yeah. today. And yeah. it's so good to have you with us here on Hope Today. And just as they were talking about the, the things that are happening and shaking, have you seen how the Holy Spirit is moving and shaking things and stirring things up? We're just glad that you are a part of all that God is doing. And we just declare each and every day that he is on the throne and his promises, his prophecies, all of his word will be fulfilled. And we want to be ready. And we're glad you're connecting with us today. And we do want to take a moment to talk about, you know, the serious nature that's going on in Turkey and Syria. Many of you probably heard there was another 6.8 magnitude earthquake that rocked that nation. And so I think for all of us, it's been very hard to process, to even fathom, to even think. You see there's a map right there on the screen where the epicenter is and just where it was all the shakings and it was like felt throughout that region in that area. And, you know, so far, I know, like the latest tolls, I know it's like maybe 45,000 people have lost right. their lives. And so I think it's really hard for us here in America and just around the world to fathom that amount of loss in life and so we just want to take a moment to lift up Turkey and Syria because our hearts are really truly breaking for that country so Tom I know you have a heart and desire to pray yeah, well, let's, let's just pray father we just bring uh, all of our uh, our brothers and sisters Lord to you and everyone in uh, Turkey in Syria in that region Lord father we see the devastation we pray father that you rush in with the love of God I pray father that uh, mercy is extended. I pray for more miracles. We've heard of miracles of people being buried and being found alive, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you would uh, do more miracles there. But Lord, we pray that you would uh, uh, bring in those that would relieve the suffering. Lord, that we see the need and we pray, Father, that your hand would be moving and to bring the peace of God in that situation. And Lord, we pray for no more aftershocks, Father and that they would, could begin the long recovery. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Yeah, let's continue to pray for them. You know, it's no mystery that one of the most intriguing and studied books of the Bible is Revelation and its relation to end times prophecy. That's what it's all about. What, it, it, what really is a mystery though, is that, uh, you know, what's America's role in Bible prophecy? You're not gonna find the word America in there, but TV host and author Rick Pearson, he's our next guest, and in his new book, The Coming Exodus, he shares what he believes is a much needed wake up call for America about what scripture says is happening and what is still to come. Rick, welcome back to Hope Today. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Tom. Well, you know, uh, the subtitle of your book is uh, Unveiling America's Future, and we'll get to that in a second, but uh, tell me, before we go into uh, how we're seeing uh, Babylon in this current age. Tell me about what is Babylon scripturally? I mean, we know about the ancient country of Babylon, the nation of Babylon, but that's used in revelation and used in prophecy. How, uh, what does it mean? Uh, the word Babylon means confusion. And there are, there are two Babylons in the end times. One is a religious Babylon the other is a commercial Babylon. Religious Babylon has to do with Baal worship. It has to do with uh, sacrificing of children to Moloch. But there is a commercial Babylon that appears 
before the Antichrist rises and before the New World Order comes in. And we believe at Prophecy USA that the United States of America, if you wonder what in the world is happening to our country, we have found out what in the word is happening to our country. These Babylonian spirits are rising up here and manifesting. Well, share with us then some of those prophetic things in the scriptures where America is fitting right in and fulfilling those. Okay, first of all, uh, she's called Mystery Babylon the Great. Mystery is the word Mysterian. It means uh, a secret revealed to a select group of people, and I like to say it's a secret revealed to a chosen generation. In Revelation, or Jeremiah 51, 7, Babylon originally is raised up by the hand of the Lord. He says she's a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. And she's the seventh of eight providential nations, according to Revelation 17.10. Now, I'm just going to read some scriptures off here. Revelation 17.3 and 4, she's the wealthiest of all nations. In Isaiah 47 and 5 and Revelation 17, she is recognized by the world with the symbol of a woman. Of course, we have the Statue of Liberty and the seven spikes on her head. When that when that statue was originally designed, those spikes were to represent the seven continents of the earth. Babylon sits on the seven mountains of the earth. And Babylon is used to hold down the Antichrist spirit. So you have America that was raised up by God that sent the gospel out, one nation under God, the Judeo-Christian uh, uh, heritage of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this is... Uh, she becomes the richest of all the nations. The merchants of the earth trade with her in Revelation 18, 17. And she actually trades 27 different products that are already listed. So she's a nation that has many, many ports. The merchants of the earth come and trade. She's the richest of all nations. But religious Babylon gets in to commercial Babylon according to scripture, and she starts falling into darkness. This is what we're seeing today. We have taken the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've taken them out of government, out of schools, the prayer out of school, and that's been replaced by what Jonathan Kahn calls is the dark trinity, which is the spirit of Baal, the spirit of Ashtoreth, yeah. and the spirit of Moloch, which is the shedding of innocent blood. So this is what we believe that we're seeing right now, the transition as Babylon falls into darkness. But inside of Babylon is a remnant of people. And God says, come out of her, my people, be not partaker of her sins, nor in the plagues that shall come. So as Babylon breaks her covenant with God, it doesn't mean that the remnant inside of her breaks their personal covenant with God. And that's where we're at today, right now on the prophetic time clock. Well, let me, let me ask you about some of those things where religious Babylon is pulling America down and we're falling into those things. You mentioned three spirits there. Could you unpack those a little bit of where, okay. where those things are happening in America? Okay, Baal worship has to do with immorality. It has to do with sexual immorality. Um, Ashtoreth has to do with, that's the female counterpart of Baal. Now this all originated in ancient Babylon with Nimrod. But Baal is the male counterpart of this god of fertility. Ashtoreth is the second female part. And what they did is they put a pole in the ground in ancient Babylon, carved it in the shape of a woman, and then they had orgies, both men and women, both priests, men with men, women with women, around these poles. Now, in America today, we don't have any poles carved in women, but we have 3,500 strip clubs in the nation with live women hanging off them, and men come and they throw their money. So this is a form of Ashtoreth worship. And then the third part of that dark trinity is Moloch. When you have immorality and you have a nation fall into this darkness, they have children that they don't want. Then they start sacrificing their children to Moloch, 
And the number one reason they sacrificed children to Moloch in the Old Testament is because they thought they would receive a financial blessing. The number one cause for abortion today is people who don't think they can afford to raise a child. So here we have the dark trinity of Babylon, Mr. Babylon, the religion. And if people don't come back to God, God will judge that because he judged Israel, the covenant nation, all through history when they entered into Baal worship. So our job at Prophecy USA is to call people to come back to Jesus, come back to God, and, and come out of the sin and get into covenant with God because we feel that judgment is coming to America. Rick, just really appreciate how you're breaking down the dark trinity. For some people, it's probably the first time they've ever heard of it or trying to comprehend and understand it. And just, you know, what you're seeing and what you're on the prophetic timeline, what is coming next for America? Because I think a lot of times with prophecy, we want it to feel good. We want to hear prosperity, but there's a real, there's a truth and there's real things that God has in store for America. Can you tell us about that? I think uh, I asked Oral Roberts this uh, several years ago, uh, six months before he died, and he said, Rick, I believe that there's going to be a separation between the wheat and the chaff. And right now what you're seeing is God is pouring out his spirit uh, in Kentucky and in different regions, and he's reaching out to the young people, and he's saying, come to me, come back to me, let me love you, let me protect you. There's going to be gross darkness and also a bright light shining. And that's the separation of the wheat and the chaff. You know, when you look at the Grammys and you see open Satan worship right on television, this would have never happened 15 or 20 years ago, but now it's the norm. And so the nation, there's a separation coming and the light of the gospel will get brighter. I believe we will see a move of signs and wonders, very similar of what is happening uh, in Kentucky, but the darkness is going to get darker, and just like Pharaoh and the Exodus, it said that God hardened Pharaoh's heart and did signs and wonders before he judged Pharaoh and before the exodus came for the children of Israel to flee out of the bondage. Rick, what does the, uh, what does the average Christian, I mean, maybe we're not in Kentucky, we're not in the, in the revival right now, we're not in, what do we do? What's our response to this? Here we are in America, in many ways, still feeling the blessings of prosperity here and, and, and various you know, blessings of freedom that are still remnants here. But what do we do as Christians with this uh, in view of what you're sharing? Uh, I, I think the number one thing is to strive to be like Paul. Paul said that the life of Christ might be made manifest in me. You know, get back into the word, study the word, have communion with God, get close to him and listen for that still small voice to be used as a vessel of kindness, of helping others, and stay close to God because there's a second mystery, not only mystery Babylon the Great, but there's a mystery when Paul said, behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed instantly. When Jesus comes to rapture the church, we want to be ready for that. So you want to be involved uh, with the body of Christ, a body of believers, and, and ask God to show you on a daily basis can, how, who can I be kind to? Can I help someone here? Uh, be the best employee you can be. Be the best father you can be. Be the best mother you can be. Be the best daughter or son you can be. And just stay in this word and let this word come alive inside of you. That's, that's on an individual basis because we cannot control what is happening in Bible prophecy. God said, I have spoken it, I will also do it, I have purposed it, and I will bring it to pass. You just want to make sure that you're walking close with Jesus. And that's, that's the best advice I could give to anyone. 
Rick, I just love that advice because really our truly our highest calling is to look and reflect like Christ in all the earth, whether we're here in America or Middle East or wherever it may be. And just want to ask, you know, I know we have a few minutes left back in this segment, but can you just talk to us for a moment? What is going on? We're seeing a lot of rumblings and shakings in the Middle East and different parts of the world. So what is God even doing in that part of the region? I think that's birth pangs of what's to come and it's coming to America. It's not gonna stay over there, but America right now has fallen into uh, several curses. We don't have time to go into it, but since the Biden administration take over, we've had our walls fall down. Our walls are down. We have 5 million people come in. Um, we're, we're in debt, a debtor nation. We should be a lender nation if we're in the blessing. Um, and then, of course, in Afghanistan, they left their people there, and, and we fled from a little Taliban army. The strongest, most powerful nation in the history of the world runs from a Taliban army while they say, death to America. So um, when I'm watching what's happening over there, my calling is, is basically North America, but these are birth pangs of the Antichrist rising and, and you see darkness all around the world, uh, and the darkness is also here happening, but we don't have to live in the darkness. We can live in the light. And Paul said, for those of you who are troubled, rest with us. Um, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall appear with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and believe not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But instantaneously, when Babylon's judgment comes, we will be taken out. That is the exodus that's coming. So we want to be rapture ready. We want to be as close to God as we can. We want to walk in kindness and love and fulfill whatever calling that God has for you. Get close to God and stay under his, his covering. And the Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. And that's what we need to do. So all of this that's happening around us are birth pains of what happens when the world rejects God and the darkness rises. I like that term, rapture ready. We need shirts to say that right on here. Rapture ready. Uh, uh, we, we've got to be rapture ready. ready. Let me ask you this, and I don't want you to overcommit yourself here and just... But people are going to say, well, when, how close are we? When is this happening? Obviously, you're not going to predict the date. I hope you don't anyway. But, uh, no. you know, <laughs> what is your thoughts on how far along the prophetic calendar we are? Well, the new world order is rising, and that is the beast, what they want to do. We can see the eighth nation rising. We can see the seventh nation, which is Babylon the Great. We are falling into darkness. Nobody knows the day or the hour. Um, I don't put any prophetic time clock on this, but I will say this. I received this revelation 36 years ago. And we're 36 years closer to the second coming than when I received it. <laughs> That's the best I can do, Tom. Nobody knows the day or the hour, but we can certainly see the signs of the times around us. Amen. Well, thank you, Rick. Rick Pearson from Prophecy USA. His new book is The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. Rick, you have given us a lot to think about, a lot to pray about, and a lot to be ready for. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Tom. Well, we're going to take a brief break. We're going to come back. Uh, if America's still here, we're going to read a scripture, and we're going to have some ministry and uh, we'll be right back. Hey Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. 
Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. Well, welcome back to Hope Today. We hope that you were with us for the first part in our fantastic conversa conversation with Rick Pearson. I tell you what, I felt like a sponge during that conversation, just soaking in all the richness of what has been revealed to him and the scripture that came. And speaking of scripture, we love to bring God's word to you every day. And today's verse comes from Revelation 18.4, and it says this, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest, and lest you receive of her plagues. Uh, Rick spoke of this verse during the conversation today. And what I so appreciated is that, you know, he talked about how America is so similar to how Babylon is described in the book of Revelation. And while America might be falling into darkness, there is this remnant of God's people to rise up and come out of that darkness and be that bright light of God's love and kindness. And while the darkness is getting darker, the light, which is us, God's chosen generation, we're shining brighter than ever before. And I also, you guys, what I appreciated was how he talked about that love and kindness. And I thought, okay, so for the average Christian, we might be saying, okay, we're not Satan worshipers, we're not murdering anybody, and so we're not really the darkness. But yet, how many of us struggle are still holding on to darkness in us through unforgiveness and bitterness, resentment, that shame, that guilt that the enemy has kept you captive and Jesus has set you free. Like, let's come out of those things and be the people of God that he has created us to be so that we can go forth with joy and peace and love and kindness. Like, will change the world. Yeah, you know, there's like such a, it was such a rich conversation. I know we're all like sponges, like you said, Anna, just soaking it all up. And one thing as you were speaking, God just reminded me of something is that, you know, one thing, there's a Hebrew calendar. So we're on the Gregorian calendar, there's a Hebrew calendar. And if you don't know that we're actually about to go into the month of Adar and it's the first month on the Hebrew calendar. And what's interesting in the month of Adar, it's the book of Esther we see taking place for such a time as this when they went on that fast because things were so crazy and rampant of what things are going on. And I believe in this season, and that God is saying to all of us, to so many of us, to those that are intimate and are listening to God and are, we're called as that remnant is like, you have been called for such a time as this, that we should not be surprised that it's getting darker, that we should not be like, oh my goodness and fearing. No, we have the ability because we are in a relationship with Jesus Christ, because he is seated at the right hand of the father, that we can come into his presence. We can listen and he'll give us understanding. He will give us insight and he will give us revelation for the signs of the times and things that are happening because I truly believe what's going on in the season, no matter what sphere of influence you're called to, God is wanting you to come up higher, to seek his face, and he will download and drop solutions, problems, ideas, whatever it may be, to be a hope solutionist. I know that's something James Gall has said, and I've grabbed that as my own, is we are called to be hope solutionists. We are called to go out as forth as the ecclesia. We are the governing body of God. There should be nothing that harms us. You know, even though we know like hell comes against us, we will prevail. Why? Because greater is he Christ that is in us than he that is in the world. So take hold of that today and seek his face and get into his presence and be like, God, what do you want me to do today? Where are you calling me to be? And I want to be obedient to that. If it's in the grocery store, if it's in the, you know, in the school system, in your family, wherever it be, seek the face of God. Know him, listen to him so that we can go out and be the light and shine brightly. Because even though there's gross darkness that is filling the earth and it's going to continue, we're going to arise and we're going to shine because the glory of the Lord is upon us. Tom. Yeah. You know, I love that, Sydney, and I love uh, and appreciate what Rick was sharing about being those people of the book, the people that do the things and live out the life of Christ. You know, one of my favorite scriptures is uh, in Proverbs where it says, the wicked flee when no one is pursuing, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So it is not a time for us to shrink back. 
It is time for the righteous to be bold. It is time for us to be those ones that we're the bearers of the light, right? Think about that. We carry the light of God with us. We carry the message of Christ with us. Let's be those people. Let's be the ones that say, wherever we are on this prophetic calendar, it's coming, okay? The, the Lord shall return with a shout, okay? In fact, we're supposed, to, we're supposed to rejoice at this, right? We don't like what we see as the, as the birth pangs of, of, the, of the end times, ladies, but we want to be those people that say, we're rejoicing at his appearing. So I want to just ask you, are you one of those that rejoice at his appearing or will you shrink back? We say, no, don't look at me, God. Don't look at my sin. Or we say, Lord, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for loving me. And, and Lord, thank you for uh, convicting me of my need for you. So if you haven't done that, open your heart to God today. Open your heart and, and let him in and say, Lord, I need you in my life. Maybe this is the first time you've heard any of this. Maybe it scares you a little bit. I understand that. But when we are in God, we are completely safe, no matter what kind of torment goes on around us, no matter what kind of weather goes on around us, what kind of shaking goes on around us, we are safe in Him. And so whatever the end times brings, be in the will of God. Be the one who says, I'm, I'm Christ, I'm following after Him. I'm gonna be that person open the door of your life to him today. And I just want to say this really quickly because God was just speaking this like ask him for insight. You know the That's fear right. of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And one thing that God has just highlighted in my spirit, I think it's like we love God and we, we're like oh God we love you but do we fear him? Are we in awe of him? Because that's what we need in this nation, in this country. We don't fear God. If we feared God some of the things wouldn't be happening and you know what's happened? It first happened in the church where we have allowed fear to enter in and we've kind of crouched back. But this is a time and this is a season, I truly believe that God is saying, fear the Lord, fear him. Because when you fear the Lord, he reveals his secrets to those that fear him. So you can get that insight, you can glean that understanding. Anna, what are your I thoughts? I love that you said insight, because I was thinking vision. Yeah. Like we need God's vision for our lives, what he wants to do in us and through us. We have to have the power of God to be the people of God. Like this is not a time for weak, apathetic Christians. So today, my friends, get into God's word. Know that his word will be fulfilled as it goes out from his mouth. It will not return to him void. Thank you so much for being with us today on Hope Today. Have a good one. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover the seven resolutions that can transform your life. Pastor and author Carl Clausen shares seven resolutions that will teach you how to overthrow old patterns, create new life systems, and take hold of God's promises. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.